Hi everyone, we're continuing our series of beginner chess videos here on My Chess Notebook. In this video, we're going to look at an opening sequence of moves known as the Gioco Piano. Let's get right into it. So the Gioco Piano is the opening where white plays pawn to e4, black responds with pawn to e5, white brings a knight out to the f3 square, Black brings a knight out to the c6 square. White develops a bishop to c4, and black responds with a bishop to c5. And once you arrive at this position, that means you have played the Gioco Piano opening. So this name, Gioco Piano, is an Italian phrase that means the quiet game. It's name probably goes back to the player Greco, who was an Italian chess player and author, and he analyzed a lot of openings, including this one. Okay, so we're going to back up and take a look at these moves in detail and find out why they are played. All right, so to begin with, the reason why it plays e4 is because it places a pawn in the center of the board, and remember, the center of the board is very important to control in the opening. And that pawn also controls the d5 square. But the pawn also opens up diagonals here for the bishop and the queen to get into the game. So it's an excellent first move. Both beginners and grandmasters alike play that move. And for the same reasons, black sometimes responds symmetrically with the pawn to e5. Okay, now white can plan to bring in these two minor pieces into the game and make way for castling on the king side. So white's next move is knight to f3. That's an excellent move because it develops a piece toward the center of the board. That's the natural square for the knight. And the knight is attacking the black pawn on e5. And this will limit black's responses. So black would like to defend that pawn, and in the Gioco Piano, he does that by developing a piece. If you play knight to c6, that's a dual purpose move. You're both getting the knight into the game toward the center of the board, and you're defending the pawn. So it's an excellent move. I will back up though and consider some other ways of defending the pawn. Another way to defend the pawn, which is perfectly acceptable, is to push this pawn to d6, and so you're defending that e5 pawn with a pawn. And that's another opening entirely. Um, some beginners try to defend that pawn by pushing their f pawn forward to f6. I should point out right now that that is a bad mistake, and here's why. If you ever see your opponent do that, my recommendation is to take the pawn on e5 anyway. That looks suicidal. You're giving up a knight for a pawn. That's a bad trade, but there's a reason you do this. You follow up with queen to h5 check. Now, there are only two ways to get out of check, and both of them are bad. One way to get out of check is to block the queen with the pawn. But then you can play queen takes e5, and you're checking the king again, and you're making a fork because you're attacking the rook on h8. So once black gets out of check, you can then take the rook in the corner and you win material and you will be up in the game. The other way to get out of check here is to move the king forward to e7, but then again, you can take the pawn on e5 and call check, and this forces the king to step aside to the f7 square and you can get another piece into the game with bishop to c4 check, and you're attacking this king, which doesn't want to be out in the open like this. It would rather be castled safely behind a nice wall of pawns. So white is winning here, even though he gave up a knight. Notice white already got two pawns back for the knight he gave up. So that's not a good way to defend that pawn on e5. The most popular way to defend is the way that it's done in the Gioco Piano, which is the move knight to c6. So you're developing a piece and defending the pawn at the same time. 
Okay, now for white's third move, he plays his bishop to c4. That's an excellent move too. And the reason that move is so good is because it develops a piece, so there's a piece in the game now, and it's on a very nice square where it's pointed along this diagonal. So it's influencing that central square on d5, and also it's pointed at that f7 pawn, and that f7 pawn can actually be a weakness in some cases, because black is only defending that pawn with his king. And so if white can attack it and bring some pressure on that pawn, um, he might gain something from that. In fact, if you watched one of my earlier videos, then you know all about scholar's mate, which is a four move checkmate that involves white using his bishop and queen to attack that pawn on f7. Okay, also notice that white is ready to castle whenever he wants. So it's a very good opening. Now, black responds in the same way by bringing the bishop out to a nice square that affects this central square on d4 and points right at that weak point on f2, which is only defended by the white king. So once you arrive here, this is called the Giocco Piano, which I mentioned is Italian for quiet game. So you may wonder, why is it called the quiet game? Is it going to be peaceful? No action, no trades, no checkmates? Well, no, that might not be an appropriate name for the opening. It depends on how you play it. It can be very exciting. You can win or lose in a dozen moves. So it's not necessarily going to be a quiet game. How do we follow up from here? Well, there are a lot of ways to play. I just want to mention a couple of concepts for white. One thing white has to decide is what he's going to do with this d-pawn. So that d-pawn should be pushed forward at some point to let out the dark squared bishop along this diagonal. But do you want to push it one square or do you want to push it two squares? Now, if you want to push it two squares, you have to prepare that. It cannot go two squares now because black has a lot of firepower on that d4 square, and you'll simply lose that pawn. So some players prepare that move by pushing the pawn to c3, so that pawn will defend a pawn on d4. Uh, for example, games sometimes continue with knight to f6, and then the pawn gets pushed to d4, and white has this excellent pawn center in the middle of the board here, and the bishop on c5 is being attacked. So that's one way to play with your d-pawn. Another way to play is to push the pawn just one square forward, and you can do it now, or you might castle first. Castling is sensible. Um, I always recommend to beginners to castle as early as you can. Get your pieces out of the way and castle. There's no reason to delay it. So if you castle there, then a typical move by black would be to bring this knight out to get ready to castle himself. Now notice that knight is attacking the e4 pawn, and now is a good time to defend it with the move d3. Now if you push that pawn just one square to d3 and you don't prepare to push it to d4, then yes, the game can get a little quieter, a little more peaceful than it otherwise could be, and in fact, when you push that pawn to d3 like that, this opening has a new name. It's called the Gioco Pianissimo, Pianissimo instead of just piano. And if you know Italian, then you know that Gioco Pianissimo means very quiet game instead of just quiet game. Okay, and how do you continue from here? Well, that's a subject of another video perhaps, but of course you need to get your pieces developed. As the white player, you need to get this knight into the game, you need to get this bishop into the game, you might pin that knight, you might bring this rook to a central file here, you might get your queen off of the back rank, and you might connect your rooks. Okay? You might push your pawn to c3, in anticipation of pushing this pawn to d4 later on and having that pawn supported. That's something to keep in mind. 
And meanwhile, black will be castling. They'll probably be pushing that pawn forward one square to get this bishop out, and this bishop can come out on this diagonal. Um, and both players will develop, and you'll keep in mind that you're trying to control the center of the board as you do so. Okay, so that's your first opening as a beginner, and we will look at many more in the videos to come. Thanks for watching.